The last exercise I gave you in the previous session was of this nature. You had uh, something like e, let's say e to the power of x and uh, cosine, uh, let's say 2x dx. I'm still on integrating by parts. If you remember what I said about the choice of your u and v prime, in this case here we've got a different situation because cosine can be integrated an infinite number of times without getting to derivative being zero and the e has got the similar characteristics so in this case here what is important when you choose your u and v you can choose any but in your repeated um, um, process of integrating by parts you must make sure that you are consistent in choosing your v's what i mean basically if i initially choose my u in this case to be e of x my u prime is going to be e of x and my v prime in this case is going to be cosine of 2x my v is going to be sine of 2x divided by the derivative argument in this case if i'm going to repeat this uh, this integration by part which i'm going to do i still have got to take my u to be the exponential function and my my v prime to be the trigonometric function then uh, that way I'll be able to conclude the integration easily. So in this kind of integration, let's call this integral i. Then if we start our personal integration, which we've already started here, we we'll then multiply your u and v, take this under integral sign with the subtractions before the the before the integral sign. So, which means that the this integral is going to be e to the power of x sine of 2x over 2 minus the integral of e x sine of 2x. Let's put this to our side integral sign. Now, when you look at this, it looks like we have escalated the initial point there, and uh, seeming it looks, it could seem as if this process is not going to, to end. But this process will end as long as we work with our eyes open and uh, monitoring what is happening closely. Now, in our repetition of integration by parts, basically, what are going to what's going to happen? We can still say our u is equal to e of x. And our u prime is going to be e of x. Our v prime is going to be sine of 2x, and our v is going to be equals to minus cosine of 2x all over 2. So if you do the same pattern, these two, and those two are integral sine and minus sine before. What is going to happen now? We're going to have our answer, our integral continue being e to the power of x sine 2x all over 2 and then minus half in brackets. We're going to have what to have here. This is that times that which is e x cosine 2x over 2 with the minus sign before. Now, these two multiplied in minus sign there, it gives us a plus integral of e to the power x cosine 2x dx and the, our half outside integral sign there. If we look at this carefully, you will see that this integral is the one which you started with which in this case it is i and once we see that appearing that's why i said you must monitor carefully what's happening so that you can be able to stop once you see that happening you stop inter uh, repeating your integration by parts in the usually in this kind of uh, case you will do integration by parts twice and then the integration you started must reappear now how do you conclude this Let's first of all remove these big square brackets, which means it's going to, we are going to have e to the power of x sine 2x over 2. The minus sign, minus sign will give us a plus, then you get e to the power of x cosine 2x 
all over 4. Then this minus sign, that plus sign, is going to give us a minus. And then we're going to have a minus 1 quarter. 1 quarter multiplying i. Because that, has, that is our i there. So now, at this stage now, we've got i on the right-hand side of the equation and the i on the left-hand side. So we can group these i's together, which is going to give us i plus one quarter of i equals to e to the power of x sine 2x all over 2 plus e to the power x cosine 2x all over 4. Now, our target at the beginning here was to get i. And now we've got i in the equation here. So what we can do, we can take a common factor i and basically have inside the 1 plus um, 1 quarter equals to e to the power of x sine 2x all over 2 plus e to the power x cos 2x all over 4. Then this is basically 1 quarter plus 4 quarters which is 5 quarters so we got 5 over 4 times i equals to equals to e power x sine 2x all over 2 plus e to the power x cosine 2x all over 4. Now we can make our i subject the formula. Remember i is equal to our integral which is e to the power of x cosine 2x dx and then if we make it subject the formula here, we have to divide both sides by 5 over 4, which will give us something like 4 over 5, because we've got to invert that fraction, multiplied by e to the power of x, sine 2x all over 2, plus e to the power of x cosine 2x all over 4, plus a c. Then what is left now is just to simplify this um, integral which you can simplify as follows. This 2 and that 4 will simplify you got 2 over, so you get 2 e x sine 2 x all over 5 and then this side we're going to have e to the power x cosine 2x all over all over um, 5 plus c. I hope this is uh, just, just, just double check that that is correct. This 2 here simplifies this 2 there get a 2 and then you got a 5 here. Now here you get here 4 simplifies with that 4 to get the 5 there, then that will be your answer to your integral. I hope this technique is, um, is um, recapped and you must be able to do this kind of integration by parts very easy without uh, any problem. Now, what we must also remember is part of techniques of integration is um, integration using partial fractions. In this case, we'll be looking at um, exercise of this nature. Let's say in integrating x dx over uh, over x plus one multiplied by x plus two. This type of integration basically we would need the technique of uh, partial fractions whereby we would uh, basically simplify, uh, break down this fraction into smaller fractions which could possibly integrate 
may be using lean fourth integral or power rule depending what it suffice to. So that basically motivates us to break a bit and revise how do we do how do we break a fraction, an algebraic fraction like x over x plus 1 by x plus 2 into partial fractions, in this case into two fractions with denominators x plus 1 and x plus 2. That I'm going to pre present in another section separately focused on partial fractions. But for now, I think you can now you can carry on revising and um, revising your integrals and the practicing integration Pascal. But most important, one mustn't lose sight of the basic standard forms of integrals. Like for example, let's say one most essential, the power rule whereby we were integrating a function of this nature derivative of the argument is always there because here the function is the power function that then this we know that we should always remember that it integrates to f to the power n1 plus c where n is uh, different from minus 1 and the 2 the logarithmic this is power form of the power rule form then the logarithmic form when n is minus 1 f prime of x over f of x dx that would be lean of f of x plus c and then you get um, three um, exponential form of integrals e to the power of f of x multiplied by f of x prime dx you know that this is equals to e to the power f of x plus c you must understand how this comes to that then thirdly we'll basically come to trig functions for example if we sign uh, you've got f of x prime sine uh, uh, let's say cosine f of x dx. So you must know that here you always call upon the immediate derivative of the function which is acting on f of x and here is a, a, a f of x prime. So that will be sine f of x uh, plus c. So you call upon the immediate derivative of the function then you get that. So you must notice that when you differentiate this side it is basically the derivative of sine which is cos multiplied by the derivative of the argument which gives us that and the, all the trigonometric functions basically are going to be worked out in a similar fashion otherwise these are the basics um, involving general forms of uh, the functions in this case a chain rule you must be able to remember this and use it accurately in solving your problem because without this remembering integration you might find that some part of your course are going to be a bit impossible. I'm going to stop there and encourage you to revise further and make sure that you know inter, uh, integration and differentiation and the move smooth in your course. Thank you. At this point, I think I've uh, recapped, uh, we've recapped the basics of uh, integrations. What I would like to do now is basically recap some essential techniques of integration like for example integration by parts now you say integration by parts this is very important because when you do for the series basically mostly we're going to be involved with uh, this integration by parts where does this start you first of all need to remember that if you were to differentiate uh, a product of two functions let's say we've got two, two functions u and v with respect to x this would come up as a derivative of u with respect to x derivative of u sorry with respect to x multiplied by 
v plus the derivative of v with respect to x uh, multiplied by u. Here I'm just saying x to mean the independent variable. It could be t, could be another independent variable depending on the situation. Or we can just now abbreviate this thing say u prime multiplied by v plus um, v prime multiplied by u. And this basically was the product rule of uh, product rule for differentiation. This was the product rule. So now, having understood in the previous situation that uh, differentiation is uh, the inverse of uh, integration. So now, if I introduce an inverse here to d dx of um, u times v, I'm going to just going to write it roughly. Then, if I introduce it on both sides, I'll basically have this side u prime times v times v plus v prime by u like that. Now, notice here that we put integration differentiation as inverse processes. It's basically, it looks basically like we're in a situation where we've got e to the power lean of x. Same thing which could be lean of e to the power of x. And that will take you as x. Now we get back to the variable which is being acted upon. In this case, the, what is being acted upon is uv here, which means if this is e and this is lean, we we'll get uv. If this is e and this is lean, we we'll get uv. So uv, u times v, will be equal to this integral. In this case, we can say this integral is a u integral of u prime times v plus integral of v prime times u. In the final analysis, this formula gives us roughly our formula for integration by parts. In this case, they say we are given, uh, we could make this part subject to the formula. It doesn't really matter how they make this one subject to the formula. Uh, it will give us an idea how to integrate by parts. So they say put v prime here and the u. With respect to x, let's say we to take it to x, that will be equal to u v minus the integral of u prime v dx. Now, if you look at this, what we've got here is almost similar to what we've got there. So, if we look at it without analyzing very careful, we might think that we're going to move in circles here because this can also be made subject to formula. But anyway, this can be understood quickly with an example. Let's say we've got now integral of x e to the power 2x dx. So according to this formula, I have to declare one of my functions and integral sign as a function which has already been differentiated and another function as a u which is not really not yet been differentiated. Now if I cross the equal sign, I think you can see that now I still need my u which is there and I need a v, but the v can only come from its derivative by process of integration. And then here I need u prime, but u prime can only come from u by process of differentiation. So now I've got to pick, I've got to choose these functions in a careful way that I'll basically be able to conclude this uh, um, integration. My recommendation here is that you must know that these two functions have got a certain different nature in terms of differentiation. Notice that e to the power to x, you can differentiate it infinite times without really getting to a constant of zero. But if uh, x, you can differentiate it a finite number of times, then basically the derivative should be zero. So what you, what I recommend that the function which differentiate can differentiate infinite times without getting to zero, make it 
the v prime so in this case we're going to say our u is equal to our x and our v prime is equal to e to the power of 2x then basically according to the formula here we need u prime then we move from here to u prime which is going to be equal to 1 and then with this is v prime the integration said it will be immediate integral integral of exponential function is an exponential function so it's called e to the power of 2x but divided by the derivative of the argument now once you've done that that way according to the formula you can see that this says bring together v and the u so bring together v and the u then take v prime and the v and the integral sign so take v prime and v and the integral sign and then what you do is you subtract that you subtract this one the integral sign so in this case now this is going to come up as x e to the power 2x over 2 minus integral of 1 times e to the power 2x over 2 dx you can see that 1 over 2 is a constant you can take it outside the integral sign then we give x x e to the power 2x all over 2 minus half e to the power 2x dx now when we are here now we can actually apply what we did there because we integrated this to get to there then this final answer here will give us x e to the power 2x over 2 minus the integral of this is basically that so it's going to be e 2x multiplied by half which will give us 4 plus c so that integral there will be now complete i hope you basically follow this um, integration very well i'll give you another next example just to try to consolidate this Now let's look at the next example on uh, integration by parts. Let's say we've got integral of for x squared um, cosine n x dx. Notice that n is a, a constant. Now again, if you look at these two functions, cosine can be differentiated an infinite number of times without settling at zero. But x squared can be differentiated at least, uh, let's say, up to maybe um, two times, third time, fourth, and also on, they'll be equal, they'll be equal to zero. So our choice must be u is equal to x squared, and then u prime will be equal to 2x. And our v prime is going to be equal to cos n x. And our v, which is the integral of that, is going to be um, sine n x divided by the derivative argument, which is n. Then again, v in the formula v and uh, u come together, and there is two under integral sign, and we subtract there. Then this integral is going to be equals to x squared sine n x all over n minus the integral let's take immediately take out 2 over n outside the, uh, the integral sign and say x sine n x dx so which means now here we basically add the initial situation but the power of x now is 1 so we can repeat the inter uh, the integration by parts now our choice of u was still going to be x and the u prime in this case going to be one and our v prime is going to be sine n x then our v our v in this case sine 
is a derivative, could say that the sign is a derivative of minus uh, cosine, minus cosine nx divided by the derivative of argument. Let's cancel that and put an equal sign there. Then we can now copy this as x sine x squared sine nx over n minus 2 over n. Let's have a big bracket, a square bracket. Now we've got this and that, and then take the sign which is going to give us minus x cosine n cosine nx all over n, and then this 2, we go on and take our sign with a minus, and then this is going to be a minus and minus will make us a plus, then you've got integral of cosine n x dx, and you can have a 1 over n outside the integrals, uh, outside the integral sign, then you stop there. So, you see, now, after differentiating x squared twice, we are at 1, so the next derivative will be 0, but at least now, this here, we've got a single function to integrate, which can integrate simply, then our final integral here will look like x squared sine n x over n. Now, removing the brackets here, minus and minus will give us a plus, then we've got 2x, cosine n x all over n squared uh, then the integral of cos is um, sine because cos n is a derivative so but if you divide it by the derivative of the argument which will give us n squared and this n here will give us n cubed so we're going to have this plus so minus because there's a minus sign outside there Let's say this as minus sine uh, nx all over n cubed plus c. You can double check that integral whether it's done correctly, but this was supposed to do. So basically, what I'm just trying to re highlight here is that when you've got uh, higher powers of x, basically you can repeat this integral. In this case, in this case, it was 2. We repeated integration by pass twice. Then immediately after tw after twice differentiating, you will get to a standard integral which you can integrate immediately and come to the end of the, the problem. I hope that helps you to revise integration. So try to do the following also. Let's say we've got x to the power 3, e to the power of x dx, and um, integral of. Uh, Let's say um, uh, sine uh, uh, 3x multiplied by e to the power x. Try to do this one, but this one here is, is going to present new, uh, new problems, which I'm going to explain in the last example I'm going to give you later. Thank you. Let's stop there for a while. Continuing with the other question, let's come back to basically when we started uh, differentiation, that is uh, the power rule. Remember, if we had x to the power n, the derivative of this function was uh, equals to n x to the power n minus 1. And in general, when we are involving uh, composite functions, we we'll say derivative of f of f of to the power f of x to the power n derivative will be n f of x to the power n minus 1 multiplied by the derivative of the argument. Remember here also the derivative of the argument is sitting here as 1 which is dx over dx. Now when we are integrating basically we are basically reversing this process to come back to the original functions. So now Let's start from uh, a derivative like, for example, n x n minus 1. And then this is my initial point. This is the function given. I want to go back to the function, which was differentiated. Let me use a capital letter here. 
what I would do is basically to reverse what happened here, and which means that I need to add a 1. So what will happen is that n, x, n minus 1 plus 1. And when I was differentiating, the power which was given, I multiplied it here. Now here, I would basically do the opposite. The power which I've come up with here, the new power, I'll basically divide by it here. So which is n minus 1 plus 1. I hope you understand the, the, the reverse process there. I'm basically... The, my new, I know that I've started from n, I've got here, and I want to reverse the backwards. The only thing I can do is to add 1 here, and now I know that when I started here, the power which was given, I, mat I multiplied by it. Then here, I've got a new power. So the new power which I've arrived at, I'll divide by it. There I'm trying to emphasize that I'm doing almost Every, the opposite of everything I did to, to move from here to there. So then, this simplifying will give us x to the power minus 1 plus 1 is 0 plus n will give us n. And then this n is still sitting there because it's a constant. Then n in the denominator, I would have n minus 1 plus 1 which also when simplifying I get n x n over n in the final analysis I've got my answer is x to the power n which means that I basically arrived exactly where I started by reversing this differentiation so what does this mean in general? in general it means that if you've got your function y x to the power n if you it is a derivative and you want to raise the function which was differentiated you basically would say this is equals to capital letter y equal to x n plus 1 this is what I did there to reverse the way I added the 1 so this new power I divide by it opposed to multiplying in the in differentiation so taking this thing uh, and here you must be careful that in this case here, this n must be different from minus 1. Because otherwise here, you have a division by 0, which is not accepted. So moving to the general situation of uh, having f of x, um, to the power n. Basically, if it is a derivative, you will know that it must be multiplied by f x prime. So, to raise the derivative here, to basically do the same thing, that uh, the integral of such kind of function will be basically b f of x to the power n plus 1 over n plus 1. where n must be different from minus 1 again. And I hope you understand that a function being a derivative like this, it could have basically come from a function like this plus uh, a con some constants. So in such a way that if I had said something like x squared, uh, x squared, x squared plus 4, x squared plus 6, dash dash, x squared plus a constant. If I do same thing of differentiating this function, let's say all this is, is y. If I differentiate this function y with respect to x, all these functions will basically all of them will collapse to 2x. Plus zero basically, but I can just write it as equals to two x. So when I'm going now to integrate two x with respect to x, I must know that now I'm going to do exactly 
by saying x to the power 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1. But since I don't know whether this came from x squared plus 0 or x squared plus 4, I would then just put here c for the placeholder of all these constants to be represented there. Then this basically becomes x squared plus c. And you can see that this represents n of the functions given in all this range here. So basically that's why I think you would basically be in a position now to integrate functions basically using power rule. So summarizing what Pascal would say if we've got a an integral of a function to a power multiplied by its derivative, the derivative basically of the argument of this power function here, this would integrate to f of x. Um, n power n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus a c. And that is power rule for integration. And of course, that n here is different from zero. Now, the question that n, sorry, n is different from minus one. The question that n is different from minus one takes us to uh, another problem here, uh, another type of integral here. Now, let's say n was di was minus one here. Check what's going to happen. It will be f of x to the power minus one multiplied by f of x prime dx which this is equals to f of x prime over f of x dx now once we've got a derivative which is which was some a derivative which is a quotient the suspect uh, candidate suspect you must know that you are dealing with the derivative of kind of a lean function remember if at y equals to lean of um, x we arrive to the fact that the derivative of this is equal to 1 over x multiplied by the derivative of the argument which in general we say it if is y is equal to lean of f of x you can put if absolute value there, f of x, then the derivative will be basically according to this 1 over the argument, which is 1 over f of x, multiplied by the derivative of the argument. In this case, you can see that this situation is creating what we have under our integral sign here, after transforming. So, which means once we put a, a derivative in, in, in a, a derivative of this form an integral sign whereby we can see that the denominator is a function and the numerator is the is derivative then we, can, we know that this is an integral of a lean form so therefore now we can say when n is equals to minus 1 we get the situation where f of x to the power minus 1 multiplied by f of x prime dx transforms to an integral of f prime of x over f of x dx then this must be integrated as lean f of x plus the c then basically we have now covered the minus 1 Sorry. So in that case now we can take an example. I'm just going to give you one example, then you can go and basically to books and try to recap this and practice examples you are given books. Then let's say you've got an integral of tan two x dx. At this stage some people might be surprised how is it related to what we are doing because tan 2x is not a is not this what you have here is not the ratio like what you have here. but you can think of that that way only if you haven't analyzed it properly remember tan 
is a sine 2x over cosine 2x dx. Now, if you look at these two now, this, these two functions have some kind of a relationship like two, these two, though it's maybe it's not complete, because the derivative of uh, limited derivative of cos is minus sign, so which means this is notated derivative, it will be to you is to as minus sign, but that you can solve by saying let's multiply by minus minus one times minus one, which will give us a minus sign here, two x over cosine 2x and we take 1 minus sign out is minus 1 dx again when we look at this we will find that this derivative is not really, really a complete derivative again because we are still lacking the derivative of the argument in this case the, the, the derivative of the argument is 2 then in the next stage we can have this transformed to minus 2 sine 2x over cosine 2x dx with minus 1 over 2 and if we look at this now under integral side is exactly of this structure then we can now integrate by saying 1 over 2 minus 1 over 2 multiplied by Yes. In this case, that becomes lean of f of x, which is the denominator here, which is playing the role of that, then to be lean of absolute value of 2x. And you can try to reverse this process by differentiation. If you do proper differentiation, you will see that in the final analysis, you are going to end up with your tan 2x, which confirms that whenever we are integrating, we are basically searching for the function which is differentiated to what we see under the integral sign. I think at this stage you are in the position to do a lot of similar examples. Uh, see similar examples and the best kind of practice. Let's say let's kind of give you let's say examples. I'm just going to give you these few examples to start with for your practice. Let's say you are asked to integrate x plus 1 over x squared plus 2x. Another one, integral of cot 3x dx. Let's get the um, last one. Let's say you are given um, Given something like, um, uh, let's say, tan hyperbolic 3x dx. Let's see what I can integrate it in this form. Thanks, you are top there. Please continue with your practice. At this point, I think I've uh, recapped, uh, we've recapped the basics of uh, integrations. What I would like to do now is basically recap some essential techniques of integration, like for example, integration by parts. Now, let's say integration by parts. This is very important because when we do for the series, basically mostly we're going to be involved with uh, this integration by parts. Where does this start? You first of all need to remember that if you were to differentiate uh, a product of two functions, let's say we've got two, two functions u and v with respect to x, this would come up as a derivative of u with respect to x, derivative of u, sorry, with respect to x multiplied by v plus uh, the derivative of v with respect to x multiplied by u. Here I'm just saying x to mean the independent variable. The, it could be t, it could be another independent variable depending on the situation. 
or you can just now abbreviate this thing say u prime multiplied by v plus um, v prime multiplied by u and this basically was the product rule of uh, product rule for differentiation this was the product rule so now having understood in the previous situation that the uh, differentiation is uh, the inverse of uh, integration so now if I introduce an inverse here to d dx of um, u times v I'm going just going to write it roughly then if I introduce it on both sides I'll basically have this side u prime times v uh, times v plus v prime by u now notice here that we put integration and differentiation as inverse processes it's basically, it looks this kind of like we're in a situation where we've got e to the power lean of x same thing which could be lean of e to the power of x and that would take you as x now we get back to the variable which is being acted upon in this case the, what is being acted upon is uv here, which means if this is e and this is lean, we we'll get uv. If this is e and this is lean, we we'll get uv. So uv, u times v, will be equal to this integral. In this case, we can say this integral is a u integral of u prime times v plus integral of v prime times u. In the final analysis, this formula gives us roughly our formula for integration by parts. In this case, they say we are given uh, we could make this part subject to the formula. It doesn't really matter how they make this one subject to the formula uh, to give us an idea how to integrate by parts. So they say we put V prime here and the U. With respect to x, let's say we to take it to x, that will be equals to u v minus the integral of u prime v dx. Now, if you look at this, what we've got here is almost similar to what we've got there. So, if we look at it without analyzing uh, very careful, we might think that we're going to move in circles here because this can also be made subject to formula but anyway this can be understood quickly with an example let's say we've got now integral of x e to the power 2x dx so according to this formula I have to declare one of my functions and integral sign as a function which has already been differentiated and another function as a u which is not really not to be been differentiated now if i cross the equal sign i think you can see that now i still need my u which is there and i need a v but the v can only come from its derivative by process of integration and then here i need u prime but u prime can only come from u by process of differentiation so now I've got to pick, I've got to choose these functions in a careful way that I'll basically be able to conclude this uh, um, integration. My recommendation here is that you must know that these two functions have got a certain different nature in terms of differentiation. Notice that e to the power of 2x, you can differentiate it infinite times without really getting to a constant or zero. But if uh, x, you can differentiate it a finite number of times, then basically the derivative should be zero. So what you, what I recommend that the function which differentiate can differentiate infinite times without getting to zero, make it your v prime. So in this case, we're going to say our u is equals to our x and our v prime is equal to e to the power of 2x then basically according to the formula here we need u prime 
then we move from here to u prime which is going to be positive to 1 and then with this is v prime the integration said it will be limited integral integral of exponential function is an exponential function so it's called e to the power of 2x but divided by the derivative of the argument now once we've done that that way according to the formula you can see that this says bring together v and u so bring together v and u then take v prime and the v and the integral sign so take v prime and the v and the integral sign and then what you do is you subtract that you subtract this was an integral sign. So in this case now, this is going to come up as x e to the power 2x over 2 minus integral of 1 times e to the power 2x over 2 dx. You can see that 1 over 2 is a constant. You can take it outside the integral sign. Then we give x x e to the power of 2x all over 2 minus half e to the power of 2x dx now when we are here now we can actually apply what we did there because we integrated this to get to there then this final answer here will give us x e to the power of 2x over 2 minus the integral of this is basically that so it's going to be e 2x multiplied by half which will give us 4 plus a c so that integral there will be now complete i hope you basically follow this um, integration very well i'll give you another next example just to try to consult this Now let's look at the next example on uh, integration by parts. Let's say we've got integral of uh, x squared um, cosine n x dx. Notice that n is um, a constant. Now again, if you look at these two functions, cosine can be differentiated an infinite number of times without cycling at zero. But x squared can be differentiated at least, uh, let's say, up to maybe um, two times, third time, fourth, and also on, they'll be equal, they will be equal to zero. So our choice must be u is equal to x squared, and then u prime will be equal to 2x. And our v prime is going to be equal to cos n x. And our v, which is the integral of that, is going to be um, sine n x divided by the derivative argument, which is n. Then again, v in the formula v and uh, u come together, and there is two under integral sign, and we subtract there. Then this integral is going to be equals to x squared sine n x all over n minus the integral let's take immediately take out 2 over n outside the, uh, the integral sign and say x sine n x dx so which means now here we basically add the initial situation but the power of x now is 1 so we can repeat the integ uh, the integration by parts now our choice of u was still going to be x and the u prime in this case going to be one and our v prime is going to be sine n x then our v our v in this case sine is a derivative could say that the sine is a derivative of minus uh, cosine minus cosine nx divided by the derivative of argument. Let's cancel that and put in equal sign there. Then 
we can now copy this as x sine x squared sine n x over n minus 2 over n. Let's have a big bracket. This square bracket. Now we've got this and that, and the integral sign is going to give us minus x cosine n cosine n x all over n, and then this two we go an integral sign with a minus, and then this is going to be a minus and minus will make us a plus. Then you've got integral of cosine n x dx and you can have a 1 over n outside the integrals uh, outside the integral sign then you stop there so you see now after differentiating x squared twice we are at 1 so the next derivative will be 0 but at least now this here we've got a single function to integrate which can integrate simply then our final integral here will look like x squared sine n x over n. Now removing the brackets here, minus and minus will give us a plus, then we've got 2x cosine nx all over n squared. Uh, then the integral of cos is um, sine, because cos n is a derivative. So, but if you divide it by the derivative of the argument, which will give us n squared, and this n here will give us n cubed. So we're going to have this plus, so minus, because there's a minus sign outside there. Let's have this as minus sine uh, nx all over n cubed plus c. You can double check that integral whether it's done correctly, but this was what supposed to do. So basically, what I'm just trying to re highlight here is that when you've got um, higher powers of x, Basically, you can repeat this integration, in this case, in this case, it was 2. We repeated the integration by pass twice. Then immediately, after tw after twice differentiating, you get to a standard integral, which you can integrate immediately and come to the end of the, the problem. I hope that helps you to revise integration. So try to do the following also. Let's say you've got x to the power 3 e to the power of x dx and um, integral of uh, let's say um, uh, sine uh, uh, 3x multiplied by e to the power x try to do this one but this one here is, is going to present new, uh, new problems which I'm going to explain in the last example I'm going to give you later thank you, let's stop there for a while the last exercise I gave you in the previous session was of this nature. You had uh, something like e, let's say e to the power of x and uh, cosine, uh, let's say 2x dx. I'm still on integration by parts. If you remember what I said about the choice of your u and v prime, in this case here we've got a different situation because cosine can be integrated infinite number of times without getting to derivative being zero and the e has got a similar characteristics so in this case here what is important when you choose your u and v you can choose any but in your repeated um, um, process of integrated by parts you must make sure that you are consistent in choosing your v's what i mean basically if i initially choose my u in this case to be e of x my u prime is going to be e of x my v prime in this case is going to be cosine of 2x my v is going to be sine of 2x divided by the derivative argument in this case if i'm going to repeat this uh, this integrate by parts because which i'm going to do i still have got to take my u to be the exponential function and my my v prime to be the trigonometric function then at that way I'll be able to conclude the integration easily. So in this kind of integration, let's call this integral i. Then if we start our process of integration, which we've already started here, we then multiply your u and v, t 
take this and then take less time with the subtractions before the the before the integral sign. So which means that the this integral is going to be e to the power of x sine of two x over two minus the integral of e x sine of two x let's put this two outside integral sign. Now when you look at this, it looks like we're basically at the initial point there, and uh, assuming it looks, it could seem as if this process is not going to, to end, but this process will end as long as we work with our eyes open and uh, monitoring what has happened closely. Now, in our reputation of integration by parts, basically what we're going to, what's going to happen, we can still say our u is equal to e of x, and our u prime is going to be e of x. Our v prime is going to be sine of 2x, and our v is going to be equals to minus cosine of 2x all over 2. So if you do the same pattern, these two, and those two are integral sine and minus sine before, what is going to happen now? We're going to have our answer, our integral continue being e to the power of x sine two x all over two, and then minus half in brackets. We're going to have what to have here. This is that times that, which is e x cosine two x over two with the minus sign before. Now, these two multiplied in minus sign there, it gives us a plus integral of e to the power x cosine 2x dx and the, our half outside integral sign there. If we look at this carefully, you will see that this integral is the one which you started with, which in this case it is i. And once we see that appearing, that's why I said you must monitor carefully what's happening so that you can be able to stop. Once you see that happening, you will stop inter, uh, repeating your integration by parts. In the usually, in this kind of uh, case, you will do integration by parts twice, and then the integration you started must reappear. Now, how do you conclude this? Let's first of all remove these big square brackets, which means it's going to, we're going to have e to the power of x sine 2x over 2. The minus sign, minus sign will give us a plus, then you get e to the power of x cosine 2x all over 4. Then this minus sign, that plus sign, is going to give us a minus, and then we're going to have a minus 1 quarter. one quarter multiplying i because that has that is our i there so now at this stage now we've got i on the right hand side of the equation and the i on the left hand side so we can group these i's together which is going to give us i plus one quarter of i equals to e to the power of x sine 2x all over 2 plus e to the power x cosine 2x all over 4. Now, our target at the beginning here was to get i. And now we've got i in the equation here. So what we can do, we can take a common factor i and they basically have inside the 1 plus um, 1 quarter equals to e to the power of x sine 2x all over 2 plus e to the power x cos 2x all over 4. Then this is basically 1 quarter plus 4 quarters, which is 5 quarters, so we've got 5 
over 4 times i equals 2 equals to e power x sine 2x all over 2 plus e to the power x cosine 2x all over 4. Now we can make our i subject the formula. Remember i is equal to our integral which is e to the power of x cosine 2x dx and then if we make it subject to the formula here we have to divide both sides by 5 over 4 which will give us something like 4 over 5 because we've got to invert that fraction multiplied by e to the power of x sine 2x all over 2 plus e to the power of x cosine 2x all over 4 plus a c then what is left now is just to simplify this um, integral which you can simplify as follows this 2 and the 4 will simplify you've got 2 over so you get 2 e x sine 2 x all over 5 and then this side we're going to have e to the power x cosine 2 x all over all over um, 5 plus c. I hope this is uh, just, just, just double check that that is correct. This 2 here simplifies this 2, they get a 2, and then you've got a 5 here. Now here we get here 4, simplifies with that 4, we get a 5 there. Then that will be your answer to your integral. I hope this technique is. Um, is um, recapped and you must be able to do this kind of integration bypass very easy without uh, any problem now what we must also remember is part of techniques of integration is um, integration using partial fractions in this case we'll be looking at um, exercise of this nature let's say in integrating x dx over uh, over x plus 1 multiplied by x plus 2 this type of integration basically we would need the technique of uh, partial fractions whereby we would uh, basically simplify uh, break down this fraction into smaller fractions which could possibly integrate maybe using a lean form of integral or power rule depending what it suffices to. So that basically motivates us to break a bit and uh, revise how do we do how do we break a fraction an algebraic fraction like x over x plus 1 by x plus 2 into partial fractions in this case into two fractions with denominators x plus one and x plus two that i'm going to pre present in another section separately focused on partial fractions but for now i think you can now you can carry on revising and um, revising your integrals and the practicing integration pascal but most important, one mustn't lose sight of the basic standard forms of integrals. Like for example, let's say one most essential, the power rule, whereby we are integrating a function of this nature. Derivative of the argument is always there because here the function is the power function. That then this we know that we should always remember that it integrates to f to the power n1 plus c where n is different from minus 1 and the 2 the logarithmic this is power of form of the power rule form then the logarithmic form when n is minus 1 f prime of x over f of x dx 
that will be lean of f of x plus c and then you get um, three um, exponential form of integrals e to the power of f of x multiplied by f of x prime dx you know that this is equals to e to the power f of x plus c you must understand how this comes to that then thirdly will basically come to trig functions for example if we had sine uh, you've got f of x prime sine uh, uh, let's say cosine f of x dx so you must know that here you always call upon the immediate derivative of the function which is acting on f of x and here is a, a, a f of x prime so that will be sine f of x uh, plus c so you call upon the immediate derivative of the function then you get that so you must notice that when you differentiate this side it will basically the derivative of sine which is cos multiplied by the derivative of the argument which gives us that and the, all the trigonometric functions basically are going to be worked out in a similar fashion otherwise these are the basics um, involving general forms of uh, the functions in this case a chain rule you must be able to remember this and use it accurately in solving your problem because without this remembering integration you might find that some part of your course are going to be a bit impossible i'm going to stop there and encourage you to revise further and make sure that you know inter, uh, integration and differentiation and move smooth in your course thank you at this stage i'm going to i would like to recap my important facts about integration and let's start integration I hope you still remember that integration is closely related to differentiation. Actually, it's simple. I could say integration and differentiation are two sides of the same coin. And uh, if you cannot differentiate properly, it will be very difficult to integrate properly. Actually, integration and integration understood as inverse processes. Now as I can use this arrow to basically say I can move from differentiation from integration to differentiation and vice versa. So now let's say we're given a function like y is equals to um, sine um, um, x and um, could be sine also could be sine x plus 2 and maybe they say so sine x plus 3 or in general let's say we're given sine x plus a constant so I hope you notice that the first instance here the constant is 0 now you can, should understand that by the process of differentiation if I differentiate this one with respect to x, the answer here is going to be uh, cosine uh, x. What I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to understand what, how integration relates to uh, differentiation. So now you see that cosine x is the derivative of all this family of functions. So normally when you start integration, remember we start with the indefinite uh, integrals. And in this case, if we now want to move from different from a derivative back to an integral, which is the function which was differentiated, basically we'll use the sign, integral sign is integral of cosine x dx. So in this case, basically we should understand this sign as an integral sign. At the same time, we can take it as a 
kind of question which is asked to us that here is a derivative with respect to x which function was differentiated in this case if you look at this um, column functions here we cannot precisely say whether it was cosine x whether it was sine x plus 2 or sine x plus 3 or sine x plus n constant c so in that case if we were to answer this thing just from this we would say the function was differentiated to get this derivative and then integral sign is equals to sine x plus c and that c here is a real number standing for the range of co possible constants throughout this column of functions so in other words what i'm trying to say here is that whenever you're given a derivative in this case cos to recover what the function was differentiated we must integrate as you can see here we started by differentiating a function we go to a derivative now from differentiation back to the function we are integrating so uh, if you understand this properly and it will be very good then what it follows is basically to know all the standard derivatives so that if the standard derivatives and the way the, you know, the function is differentiated in those derivatives then basically you probably have got the answers for your all your standard integrals but the story does not end there what what I of actually message I put across here is that under the integral sign what must sit under the integral sign must be a derivative but it's not true that the things are also going to be given in a certain easy way that you can clearly see what is your answer for integral for example let's say if I, I had a function like uh, let's say cos 2x dx now if I were to find a function which was differentiated to get this kind of a function I must first of all think of the fact that this is supposed to be a derivative but if this is a derivative remember we said that a derivative function is always the derivative of the immediate function multiplied by the derivative of the argument but in this case here the function does not change the argument if it's being differentiated in this case the argument is 2x so if the we know that the derivative of um, the, the cosine is the derivative of, um, of sine so now if I being asked what is the, the, what is the function which is differentiated to get cosine of 2x we cannot answer the, uh, the question unless and until we have transformed this into a complete derivative and the complete derivative is the immediate derivative of the function multiplied by the derivative of argument so there's something which is lacking here so what i want to do next is that we should try to transform this to a derivative and uh, normally that's easy doing it this way let's say now we know that the derivative of this argument will be 2 so we are basically looking at 2 under this integral then cos 2x dx but once we've done that this equal, equal sign here is no longer uh, balancing because these two sides are not equal so in order to balance that we normally put a 1 which is a 2 over 2 to take advantage of that 2 as a derivative of the argument and then we basically factor out what is done in the integral here which in this case is half then have an integral 2 cos 2x dx now if we look at this other than integral sign now there is a complete derivative there there is cos as a immediate derivative of sine and there is 2 here as the derivative of the argument now we can answer the question that what is an integral there is a derivative of sine 2x in this case we write half times the, the, the function which was differentiated to get us under the integral sign which is sine 2x and then we can add sc and then 
simplify write this thing as sine 2x over 2 plus c right at this stage here we can actually have another kind of a summary if we look at what has happened here in relation to our initial integral say the integral of a function is basically the immediate integral of the uh, function now the immediate uh, function where this uh, course is coming from which is sine then divided by the derivative of the argument and this if you listen carefully to what I had said before we would say the derivative of a function is the immediate derivative of a function multiplied by the derivative of the argument but now from here to there I could say also the integral of a function is the immediate integral function which is sine divided by the derivative of the argument which actually goes back to emphasize the fact that the, the, fun, uh, the differentiation is the inverse process of integration or integration is the inverse process of differentiation now let's explore this further with uh, some um, other functions like let's say um, let's think of first uh, can think of a function like uh, the exponential function what we know about the functional function we know that let's say the natural base e to the power of x we know that the derivative is equals to e to the power of x multiplied by ln of the base multiplied by the derivative of the argument and taking it in general then we'll say y equals to e to the power of f of x the derivative will be e to the power of f of x ln of the base multiplied by f prime in the, we're using a general base which is not natural we'll say a to the power of f of x and then the derivative so this is derivative the derivative will be a to the power of f of x multiplied by ln of a multiplied by the derivative of the argument now as i've said i said now if we inter to integrate a function like um, say e to the power of 2x dx which is very similar to what we've done with sine and cosine before you see in this case here we we'll basically say what is under integral sign here is not the usual is the not complete usual derivative of exponential sign because we are looking basically the derivative of the argument so we we'll basically do this a similar transformation by taking the integral and say e to the power of 2x with respect to x and then doing some transformation there now insert a 2 here over a 2 in a similar way we did to the sign in this in the next stage Pascal factor out half and have e so they have integral of 2 e to the power 2x dx then once this uh, expression under integral sign is adopted the form of the derivative of the function remember ln of uh, e is 1 so the 1 is included there as a factor and then f prime is included as 2 then we can now answer the question that the derivative of this function is equals to e to the power 2x but multiplied by this constant which is outside the integral sign plus a c then simplifying we put e to the power of 2x over 2 plus c then again i can repeat exactly the same the same thing that from this initial step here 
to that final step there. The integral of this function is actually the immediate integral, which is e to the power to x, but it must be divided by the derivative argument then at c. That's how we are going to inter, um, integrate this kind of function. It's very important to integrate to know how to integrate exponential function because when we get to complex Fourier series, we'll be basically constantly integrating the exponential functions. Now let's take another general example. Let's say we've got the integral of um, of form um, five to the power x squared multiplied by x dx. Now if you analyze properly there, this case is is what is that we're talking about the derivative of this nature. So partly I think you can see that the derivative of the argument here is two x and we've got two here, but we've got, we've got x here but don't have a two. And also this derivative normally is multiplied by the linear of the base and that we don't have. So when we we're going to integrate this, we've got to take all that into consideration in order to transform what is an integral sign here to be a derivative. So we're going to write integral. We get our 2x there over 2. And we can also have our lean 5 there over lean 5 multiplied by 5x squared dx. I hope you see that there's nothing wrong with what you've done here. The question holds because if this is a 2 or 2 is a 1, this is a lean of 5 or a lean of 5, which is also a 1. So we've transformed the integral, but in an equivalent way, so to speak. So we will now factor out all what is redundant in the integral sign, which will basically be um, 1 over 2 lean 5. And then the then the I want to be given with 2x, which is derivative argument, lean 5, which is lean of the base, and by 5 to the power x squared dx. Then immediately we can now see that this structure here is exactly the same structure we have got there. Then we can ask ourselves. Where does this come from as a derivative? And you can see clearly it comes up from something like this. In this case, now we just in the integral we to identify our base, identify our, our our f of x. Then here we'll say this integral is equals to five x squared multiplied by one over two then five plus c. Basically, what is going to happen now is that we can now write, uh, simplify this and uh, write 5x squared over 2 lean of 5 plus c. That way, I think I've just shortly revised with you the important integrals, the exponential functions, and the trigonometry functions. And what is important basically is to understand the relationship of integral and uh, derivative know how to manipulate this any function given to transform it to a derivative so that you can give your answer to your integration. I'll stop there for now.